You are Locked On Wolverines, your daily podcast on the Michigan Wolverines, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Happy Thursday. You know what that means. Locked On Wolverines podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it is your team every day. I am your man on the ground as a whole publisher of Wolverines Wire through USA Today Sports Media Group and Again, for the YouTube watchers, I'm sorry, I forgot to hit publish again until I sat down here and I was like, why didn't it publish? And it's because I didn't hit the button. We'll try to make sure I hit publish today or we'll just stay a day behind on YouTube. I don't know. Um, While we do have news that we could cover, Damani Dent just entered the transfer portal. Um, We're going to go ahead and uh, not talk about that today. Uh, we'll probably add that to our list of things to talk about tomorrow. Uh, but because today is the Michigan mailbag and we are doing it relatively early, it's 11 o'clock. This has got to be the earliest I've recorded a podcast since it's been on video. Um, nonetheless, let's start with our leaders and best, starting with James Crudup at James Crudup 6. One game for your life. Who is your Harbaugh era running back? I mean, it's simple. It's Blake Corum. There's, there's no one else that has his full capability right because it's if if he didn't do the types of things which is the fall forward get you know you need one yard get six that if he didn't do that last year because that was what Hassan Haskins did that was so special and it was like well what can Blake do yeah who's going to be that third down back who's going to be that short yardage back and then Blake Corum ended up doing it it would so it would be very easy for me to say in the Jim Harbaugh era uh, that it would be Blake Corum. Now, I don't know if you want me to go back to San Francisco or then say Frank Gore or Toby Gerhardt or someone of that nature. But I mean, if, as long as we're talking Michigan and probably above all, it would be Blake Corum. Um, obviously, I want to see another year out of it because Michigan gets him back for another year. A big part of the success or the hoping hope of seeming success, but it would be Blake Corum. No offense to Karan Higdon or Chris Evans or Donovan Edwards or Hassan Haskins or uh, Devion Smith or Ty Isaac. Or, you know, there's just there's there's a lot of backs that have been pretty good. Hassan Haskins was pretty great. Karan Higdon was pretty great. Uh, but uh, it really Blake Corum is the only true answer at this point. Could be Donovan Edwards by the end of the next, this upcoming year, but we'll see. Josh Barr, Jadicky, seems like the change in culture has start, started around the same time Jim hired Biff. Seeing as a couple of our transfers followed Poji to Charlotte, there's three so far, Nakai Hill-Green, Ayabi Yoki, and Julius Welskoff. Is there a chance fans are overlooking his impact on the team the last couple of years? Uh, absolutely, and that's kind of why I keep on bringing him up this past couple of weeks. It was brought up to me by someone <laughs> that, that you all know and love. They said... Be wary of the fact that he has moved on. That can have significant uh, changes and impacts for this team. So, yes, I do think that it could. I don't think it will necessarily have an impact on the team right now uh, because I think that the the culture is set with the players who are there, but it could be something to look forward to next year, year after, right? My brother in metal, Michael Wolf at MWolf21, what offensive play calling changes do you expect? Coach Moore being the only play caller. Do you think Upshaw would be welcome back? Uh, I think Upshaw would be welcome back if he decided, because if you missed it, Taylor Upshaw is back in the transfer portal. I think it'd be pretty rare that you see a guy leave for a semester, actually go somewhere, and then come back to the school that he was at originally. But uh, I, I don't know. I don't know that he'll he'll do that, because that seems pretty unlikely. As far as the changes with uh, Sharon Moore, I, I, I get the feeling they will be a little bit more pass-heavy, but I'm not 100% sure on that, right? Like, we didn't necessarily see anything in the spring game that seems... Wild, wildly different, but I've heard just some kind of rumblings that they might try to pass a little bit more. But then again, when you've got the offensive line, when you've got the running back or the yeah the running backs and everything, uh, it just seems like eh maybe that won't be maybe that won't be uh, what happens. I'm checking my phone with the notification just to see if we are missing one of our leaders and best, and I want to make sure I don't if he comes in because he came in during the show, it, literally while I was recording it last week. Um, if not, we'll get to him on Friday. Uh, Jimmy Whitner, Jimmy Whitner one Have the recent transfer portal entries changed what positions you would go after in the portal. No, because they're all at, at, at positions. I mean, now they've lost two safety. So I guess maybe, but I mean, you've got Keon Sab and, and Zeke Barry who, uh, I think 
I think you've got a good situation there. And not not to forget about Quentin Johnston. I mean, I think that Quentin Johnson, Johnston, I always get very confused of which one's which. Um, but uh, it's, I, I think you've got, and Caden Colasar. I think they're probably fine there. They're fine at linebacker. Uh, they're fine at wide receiver. It, it would be one thing if they lost a cornerback, right? Then if, if like Jaden McBurrows or Amarian Walker moved down, then I think you would, you, you would then change from there. But I think that they're kind of set with what they have. And a lot of these guys have left who have left are at uh, pretty deep positions. Um, number two, in the next three years, what out of conference game are you most excited about? At Oklahoma. I've, I've been waiting for that forever. I want to go to Norman. I want to see a game there. It just it, it feels like it, it's going to be epic. I mean, I'm pretty excited about Texas as well. And uh, even though it would be would have been great to go to Texas next year, it's uh, I I think going to Oklahoma is going to be that's the one that I've wanted more than any game. The only thing that would potentially supersede that is if Michigan had a, a, an away game at LSU. Otherwise, or even Georgia, I guess. Otherwise, it's that's like Oklahoma is like a top two or three destination for me to want to go to. I couldn't tell you why. Number three, where is Zuri? Well, if you're watching, you can't see her, but we can try to get her. We can get her over. She's here in the room and very confused because I closed the door. Let's see if we can get her on video for, for those. Come on, come up here. There you go. So she is on video. She is not on screen uh, or not on the microphone. Rather, she is on screen and she's very confused as to why she's being shut into this little room when there's all kinds of excitement happening everywhere else. That's where she's at. So. Uh, she really likes this house because there's just windows everywhere, everywhere. Like you can see the window behind me. There's a window in front of me. If you go out into the, the main living room, uh, which it's a big open concept area, there's literally, I think, 10 windows out there. So she loves it because she can just go and look like we're in a little fishbowl and she can look outside. Um, so, yeah. All right. So no farmer 84 last week. He got in late. We did him on Friday. We'll do the same. Uh, if uh, he comes in at some point. But Jonathan Joseph at J. Joseph 2156 finishing us out in segment one. Does Michigan stay put or go after a transfer now? And if yes, who? Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they go after a kicker just to kind of shore things up there. Um, I, I, otherwise, I, I don't know. I'm sure like if there's just some talent, I wouldn't be surprised if they went after a corner. Uh, just again, to shore things up a little bit while they have a lot of unknowns there or even like if there was a top flight wide receiver. Or edge rusher. I um, mean, you know, I know they brought in an edge rusher, and I know that they're happy with they, what they've got, but I wouldn't be surprised if they went after it. And that's not inside info. That's just me speculating. And it seems Zuri hears things outside, so she's very excited. All right, so we're going to continue on, and we'll do that in just a moment. Before we do, if you're looking for a delicious snack, but you don't want all the sugar and calories, and you need the best-tasting protein bar ever built, you have got to try this. If you're like me and you want to make healthier snack choices, but you don't want to compromise on taste, then I've got just the thing for you. Built Bars and Built Puffs. Built Bars are healthy and they taste amazing. Seriously, they taste so amazing, you won't think they're good for you. You've got to try this. What makes Built Bars so good? Well, for starters, they're covered in 100% real dark chocolate. That's right, real chocolate. And they come in unbelievable flavors like churro, peanut butter, brownie, and cookies and cream. I'm not sure how Built does it, but these bars taste like a candy bar while maintaining amazing macros. What's even better is that they're healthy. Only 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, a whopping 17 grams of protein. And now you don't need to wait to get a box. For years, we've been talking about ordering Built Bars at Built.com, but now you can get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club while you can still get your specialty flavors at Built.com. That's right. Head to your nearest Walmart today, walk to the pharmacy section, grab yourself a box of Built Bars. You can pick up a four-bar box of cookies and cream, bar, cho double chocolate bar, or coconut puff. If you're close to a Sam's Club run and grab a 13-bar box of our hit flavors, uh, brownie butter puff and churro puff you can thank me later I'm playing russian roulette with the camera battery for the watchers out there it's it said i had more battery and then it immediately went down to one bar and it's funny when you go from four bars battery to three bars it takes like an hour and sometimes when you go from one bar to camera's dead it takes like 10 minutes so we'll see uh, Mark Z at Mark Zimke starts us out. No gym in the north to start us out, but uh, we're just kind of in those off-season lull. It feels like starting to actually look and feel like spring again, so maybe that's why. 
Uh, as you start to cover more recruiting, what will be some of your favorite words and phrases to hint at future commitments? Rumblings has always been a hit with fans. I have, uh, I was going to try to do, I, uh, I, I don't really have anything, but, um, I don't have anything specific, but when I started to cover recruiting more so on my own, when I wasn't like a part of the 24 seven sports umbrella, um, in which I kind of deferred to Steve Lorenz, you know, with that type of stuff. Uh, even when I was hearing whatever I was hearing, I, I decided that I was going to start going with, uh, uh, something to bias related from arrested development. Like, you know, I just blew myself or something, something ridiculous like that, but I never did. I don't really have a thing. Um, I I've, I've almost, I I'll, I just kind of, I'm going to give it to you as straight as I can without necessarily ruining a kid's recruitment. Right. Like just saying like, Hey, you know, if I, if I could pick today, that's usually how it goes. Now it's not always accurate, right? Like I said that about Dante Moore. And that wasn't the case, but I said it with, um, and I've gone the other way with Donovan Edwards, but there was good reason for that. I got a lot of pushback from that, but I, there was a lot of good reason to have skepticism about Donovan Edwards. Want to know how I know that? Because Donovan Edwards himself told me at that time. Um, so, uh, yeah, he wasn't coming to Michigan. <laughs> Michigan was just not, they weren't doing a good job recruiting him. But I told you straight, so I'll just tell you straight. I might not tell you the names. I might tell you something like if this person told you, know, told you you'd feel pretty good about the information they're telling you. I'm just going to stick with that type of stuff like I've said before. Ike Hamlin and Hamstand 87, live reaction thoughts. Now, I didn't, I'm not live reactioning this, which is good because we could not have the audio from this. But this was from a, a, an account that I had blocked called Truther Vandross at I Know Things 19. He's an Ohio State guy. Says, who's your starting four or five between Ohio State and Michigan's backfield? Donovan Edwards, probably one of the most overrated backs in the Big Ten I've seen in a minute. Uh, his company, all, uh, a podcast company all over the place. It's got an expletive, but that's why I'm not reading it. All over the place with their takes on this one. So I watched the video, and it's for Ohio State fans, and they are just convinced that uh, if Donovan Edwards and Blake Corum were in Columbus, that they would be pretty much at worst, the uh, or at best, like the fourth and fifth backs. Like they are taking Chip Tranum and Dallin Hayden over Blake Corum and Donovan Edwards. It was the most delusional, like pathological coping mechanism I've basically seen. And they're like, they're all ha like they, the way that they're talking about them, talking about their backs and Michigan's backs, you would think that the roles the last two years have been reversed, right? Like Travion Henderson hasn't beaten Michigan. He hasn't done anything against Michigan. Mayan Williams is not really done much against Michigan, right? Um, Dallin Hayden did nothing. Chip Tranum did okay, right? Like, but I mean, like saying like you would take Chip Tranum over Donovan Edwards it, or Blake Corum the way that they did is like looking back to uh, 2014 and saying that you would take Drake Johnson over uh, who was it that was running uh, for, for them at that time. I know they had they had a bunch of guys, right? And, and like just because he had like showed some flashes and, and things of that nature, that's it's it's a level of delusion and uh, denial, really. Like the, because Donovan Edwards had a seventy-five yard and an eighty-five yard touchdown against you, right? Like that 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 would also that would be like okay, which defense are you going to take? You know, well, I take the Ohio State defense. Why? Reasons. <laughs> you know? Uh, whereas, like, Michigan's defense has held them to 23 points last year, 27 points the year before. They're high-powered offense. So, it's just, it's just coping. It's just delusion. It's hilarious. And uh, let them keep thinking like that. Hopefully, they think like that in the building still, in Woody Hayes Athletic Center. Because if they do, they will have a third straight loss for sure. Um, Adam Casel at Adam underscore Casel, who's the first Michigan player drafted. How many Michigan players will be taken in the top 100? Uh, first player, I, 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 I'm still torn between Mozzie and DJ Turner. I could see it being either or, so I don't really want to pick one or the other. Um, someone is going to take DJ Turner no later than the second, I would imagine, just because of the pure speed. Uh, I think Mozzie will go that early, and 
I'm going to say three for sure. I don't necessarily know who the third guy is, if it will be Luke Schoonmaker, who I've seen more and more kind of in some like three round mocks. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Mike Morris goes in that, that area either. Uh, so it's just, we're kind of, uh, we're just kind of waiting here to, to find out uh, about that. Who is the next football recruit to two Michigan? Um, and, and apologies for the, uh, the, the work, uh, the work text here. Again, I'm keeping my phone out to, See if Farmer 84 comes through. He has not yet. Um, and I could probably mute it, but then I wouldn't know what's happening because I'm not wearing my watch. Um, <laughs> next football recruit to commit to Michigan. Um, it will probably be Jake Guarnera. Is that how you, how you say his name? Guarnera? I can't. I don't know. The, uh, the center out of Florida who's making his pledge tomorrow. So that would be my guess. Uh, Spencer Whitmore at Spencer Whitmore. You think we'll see Roman Wilson doing uh, punt return and kick return? I hope so, man, because he's probably the fastest guy on the team. And I think he, he runs really well. I, I, I would probably say it would be him. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's, I, I don't know, maybe someone like Zeke Berry as well, um, who, I, who I think has some speed. Uh, or even a Marion Walker, although Marion, I just feel like that's he. I mean, he, they say he's actually probably the fastest on the team. I I don't know. I think that there will be probably a committee, and I wouldn't be surprised if Blake Corum takes over again a little bit. But I think they'll probably try to save him just because they don't want to deal with an injury again. But then again, Michigan's really never shied away from that. Finishing us out in segment two, Perry Mitchell at Perry Mitchell 08. Could J.J. McCarthy throw for more yards than Kyle McCord this season, or will the pass run balance prevent it even if Sharon gives J.J. more leash? I think the pass run will, will prevent it a little bit, the, the balance. Um, I, I could see J.J. breaking, I say this every single year, breaking John Navarre's 3,331 uh, single season yards. But I think that they'll probably, the thing with Ohio State, even when they run the ball, they're, they're going to pass two times and run once. They're able to run a lot of times because the pass works, right? Michigan, they do things literally in opposite ways. They run, they pass to run. Michigan runs to pass. It's just different mentality. So I, I would be surprised if JJ out through Kyle McCord, but then again, maybe Ohio State doesn't have a quarterback and maybe they have to run more. I don't know. All right, we've got more questions coming up here in just a moment. We will return momentarily. All right, we've got, I think, five questions left. Let's get to that here in just a moment. Um, M at W-I-E-H-E-J-J-E. I'm not going to try to pronounce that, so there you go. Where do we stand with Gatlin Bear? Uh, also heard some rumors on Aaron Scott having Michigan as his favorite. Steve Wiltfong posts post that in a free article on 24-7 that uh, there are rumors that Aaron Scott are uh, has Michigan as his favorite despite his crystal ball pointing towards Ohio State. Take that for what it's worth. Man. This is, uh, <laughs> okay, now I'm going to mute the phone because it's getting a little much here. Um, some of it's the, uh, the spam texts that when you know, hey, get a discount when you sign up for this. Okay. And then they text you every day. Yes, I, I do want Buff City soap every single day. Thank you. Um, as far as Gatlin Bear, I think Michigan's in good standing. Uh, I, I, I would probably say he's likely to be a Michigan lean, but he's being more heavily pursued, I think, than he was before. So, uh, we'll see how long he takes his recruitment. That's going to play a big, a big part in it. I think I'm not the one at William Cawthor nine, Michigan will win the natty. If what Michigan won't win the natty. If what, okay. Michigan will win the nat- national championship. If, uh, JJ McCarthy takes at least a modest step forward. The offensive line at least stays at around the same level as it has the last two years. Uh, Blake Corum and Donovan Edwards at least stay at the same level as they did uh, last year. And the defense stays at about the same level as it was last year and gets a little bit more of an interior pass rush. And the coaches learned from their postseason getting too cutesy. That's a lot. Michigan won't win the national championship if there is any step back in any of that, which is certainly possible. But I, I just I, I don't know that it's necessarily probable. If you could change anything about the current program, would it what would it be? I, I would make it a little bit more open, right? Like because like oh, and this this is from a, a very uh, selfish <laughs> stance. 
Um, but like other programs uh, are a lot more open with the media, right? Like Ohio State has, um, Ohio, Ohio State has like open practices for the media. They meet a lot more with the media. If you ask them questions, they actually give you answers. Michigan's very close to the vest, and it's just different mentalities, right? Like we don't want to share anything, um, but like like Ted Lasso said on the most uh, recent episode. Uh, well, I don't remember what he said. He said, like, we're not whatever, <laughs> uh, you know, it's like named like a government institution or something like that. And so we're not them. So, you know, what by all means, well, he invited uh, the bar rats to practice. So uh, I would just make it a little bit more open because I don't think there's any harm in it as long as like we're not like sharing their playbook, you know, and I, I think that wouldn't be. It wouldn't it, because when you consider that, at least the way that I treat it is I'm a liaison between the program and you guys. Right. So if things are a little bit more open, then I can give you more information that you want. And it's not necessarily going to hurt anything as long as everyone's smart about it. Granted, take, also takes as a bad actor. We've seen that time and time again um, before it's ruined. But uh, I mean, I just don't see it, why it is as big of a deal as it is. But I mean, I don't begrudge it. I understand it. I just wish that uh, we had a little bit more so we could give you a little bit more. Philly, with question mark at the end, at I am Philly with three Ys. How has Michigan managed to pile up a top five 2024 class when it seems likely that Sharon Moore is gone next year? I think that they just don't even, I just don't think that they, they sit there and address that, right? Like, and it's not all Sharon Moore. And some of like, you know, there's defensive guys, there's offensive guys. Obviously, all the recent commits are offensive, really, except for uh, Jared Smith. But I think it's you, you don't, and you, you've seen this at other places, right? You know that the top coaches at any school, maybe except for the coordinators at Alabama, I mean, even though they just had turnover, you know that if things go really well, those guys are gone. That's just how, that's just the nature of coaching. You just hope that the head guy is there. Or maybe your direct position coach. So, like a wide receiver, say Gatlin Bears talking with Ron Bellamy, he's hoping Ron Bellamy stays more so than Sharon. Maybe the offensive line, that's a little bit different, but they just maybe have faith. And you also sell the program, right? You aren't selling a coach, you're selling the program. Do you know why all the guys transferred on Monday? Uh, I don't. I mean, I've been talking about AJ Henning possibly transferring, though, for a while, right? Because, like, his role has shifted so dramatically. He's not a focal point. He's getting in the twilight of his college career. If he wants to play at the NF in the NFL, he's clearly not going to get there through Michigan if they continue to uh, de decrease his role. Uh, I would imagine Nikai Hill Green wanted to follow Biff Pogey, appears that way. And uh, as far as RJ Moten, I, I don't know. Maybe he just didn't want to share the spotlight with two other guys. Maybe they told him, hey, you know, we're, we're going to play Macari more. But those types of things generally don't come out. Uh, Steve at Steven ad, when does it up North begin? Oh, wrong quote, Michigan question. I know you did that on purpose. Milwaukee bridge, man. It's that simple. Milwaukee bridge. Uh, Q at crispy nip, <laughs> uh, finishing us out. Any word on Nick Marsh in Michigan? Uh, I don't think he's coming to Michigan. He seems Michigan state bound, but Michigan looks like they're stealing away Jeremiah Beasley. So there you go. All right. That's going to do it for us today. We will be back on Friday talking some whatever happens in the NFL draft, if anything, maybe talking a little bit of uh, Jedi Survivor or whatever it's called, because that comes out uh, technically tomorrow, but GameStop said I can pick it up tonight. So, um, yeah, that's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Peace.